Hello, ladies and gentlemen. You are welcome to Scientific TV. So today we are going to present on HIV and AIDS. So now what is uh, HIV AIDS? Now HIV stands for Human Immunodeficiency Virus, while AIDS stands for Acquired Immunodeficiency Syndrome. Human Immunodeficiency Virus Infection and Acquired Immunodeficiency Syndrome is a spectrum of condition caused by infection with human immunodeficiency virus known as the HIV, which is also a retrovirus. So typically, this is followed by a prolonged incubation period with no symptoms. So when a person is infected with HIV, uh, this is followed by this incubation, which is a very long period between one to three months, one to six months, and some people are even a year. So this diagram shows the human structure of the human immunodeficiency virus. So now HIV and AIDS, what's the difference? Now what's the difference? HIV is the virus that causes the HIV infection. Uh, HIV damages the immune system by killing the CD4 uh, cells. So we can be able to see here that yes, without HIV medicine. So when a person is infected with HIV, so within the two years, four year, six year, eight year, and ten years, we have the HIV now develops. So now the CD4 cells are part of the immune system. HIV attack this uh, system and kill the CD4 cells. Uh, loss of CD4 cells make it hard for the body to fight up infection. And the body is a sort of uh, opens to opportunistic infections. Now, the HIV. Uh, 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 AIDS is the last stage of HIV infection. And as the HIV infection advances to AIDS, the amount of HIV in the body increases and the number of CD4 cells decreases. HIV medicine can stop HIV infection from advancing to HIV AIDS. Now, without HIV medicine, HIV advances to AIDS in about 10 years, as we have seen from here. Now, the most common method of transmission of HIV. So, as we can be able to see, that these are the most common method through which HIV is transmitted. One is unprotected sex with an infected partner. Two, we have sharing needles with an infected person. And then the three uh, are almost eliminated as risk factors for HIV are we have the transmission from infected mother to coitus and then infection from blood uh, products. So what are the stages of this HIV. Now we have the first one which is an acute stage. We have a chronic stage of HIV and then we have AIDS. Now flu-like symptoms that occur days to week after contracting the HIV is known as the acute HIV infection. While the chronic HIV infection also known as the latent or asymptomatic state can last for several days. Now, the eighth stage occurs when the CD4 cell count falls below 200 cells per millimeter uh, cube, uh, which makes a person vulnerable to potential infections and its defining condition. So, these are the number of dates which are recorded from 1990 to 2020. So almost 700,000 still died of AIDS per year. So as we can be able to see from this uh, diagram. And the source of this diagram is units. So from 1990, we have a very low cases of HIV. And then up to uh, 2005, 6, where we have a plateau here. And then from this 2007, we have a uh, decline of this HIV infection. 
up to this stage, uh, 2020, where we have 680,000 uh, number of cases. So these are the normal uh, ways through which we can be able to prevent HIV AIDS. So uh, one, we can get tested for this HIV virus so that we can know our status and prevent ourselves from becoming infected. Then two, we have treatment. Now we can treat uh, this particular uh, HIV when it uh, does occur. Uh, then we have mother and mother to child transmission. So we can be able to end the transmission of this uh, mother to child transmission. Then we uh, can end the discrimination as well. And then we have a pre-exposure uh, prophylaxis, which are drugs which are used to uh, suppress HIV when uh, a person undergoes a very high risk activity. That is a, a pre-exposure prophylaxis. And then we have test and treat STI. So we can be able to test ourselves and then we will treat other STIs, that is sexual transmitted infections. Then the use of a condom to prevent these diseases and then increase financing. So according to the health, World Health Organization, uh, we can reduce our risk of getting HIV infection through the use of condom, ensuring that your partner who are living with HIV are taking treatment, then the use of PEP, and then use of sterilized needles and syringes uh, for all injections, getting tested and treated for sexual transmitted infection. So these are the signs of HIV infections. Now, one, we have the swollen lymph node, no nodes. Now, in the neck, uh, here in the neck, we can have a swollen uh, node. Then two, we have a night sweating. So someone can be sweating in the night. And then we have a mouth ulcers can develop within the mouth. And then we have a fatigue. The person will always feel sick, uh, you know, uh, tired. Then chills, that is a uh, fever. And then the muscle X rashes and also uh, fever. So this can also develop as a result of exposure to the virus itself. So the types of the drugs used for treatment of HIV. So we have these drugs are generalized into these categories. Now we have a fusion inhibitors. Now this fusion inhibitors prevented the HIV from fusion with the body cells. The viral passed through the host cells membrane so the mechanism is that these fusion inhibitors prevent viral passing through the host cell membrane. So, and then this we have the nucleotide, nucleoside, reverse transcriptors, inhibitors. So, this bind to the position distance from the active site of reverse transcription. So, and then we have nucleoside, reverse transcriptors, inhibitors. Completely inhibit reverse transcriptors an enzyme which is a very important in uh, HIV. So we have a chemokine receptor antagonist. Uh, now the mechanism of this involve HIV fusion to the host cells. And then we also have a protease inhibitors which are which prevent HIV formation. And we also have integrase inhibitors which uh, actually inhibit HIV integration into the host uh, genome. So um, these are the drugs that we use. So um, 